Hi, welcome to a 10 minute lesson on the Gale Shapley algorithm or the algorithm of happiness. The lesson will roughly follow this format. Let's start with the problem that this algorithm is trying to solve, which is the stable magic problem or sometimes called the stable marriage problem. Now consider a group of N men and N women that want to find partners for a dance. Now it's important that the number of men and the number of women are exactly the same. Can we pair up these men and women in a stable fashion? Now, what is a stable fashion? To understand this, let's look at the example of an unstable matching. If we consider the situation in which this man and this woman are paired up, and this man and this woman are paired up, but actually the, the woman from the red matching would prefer to be with the man from the green matching over her current partner, and the man from the green matching would also prefer to be with the woman from the red matching over his current partner. So in this case, there's a danger that these two might run off and decide to be partners for the dance together and break the matching. So this would be an unstable matching. A stable matching would be one in which, say we have a man M and a woman W paired together, then at least one of the following conditions is true. The man M prefers the woman W over every other woman going to the dance, or if M prefers another woman over W, then it is certain that she prefers her partner over M. There is no case where two people would prefer to be with each other over their current matching. So the problem was, given an equal sized group of men and women, can we find a stable matching between them? And the solution was given by David Gale and Lloyd Shapley in 1962 in the form of the Gale-Shapley algorithm. And two nice properties of the gear shapely algorithm is that a matching can always be found between the men and the women. So if we have 10 men and 10 women and we're trying to find a stable matching between them, it can be found. Or if we have 10 million men and 10 million women, then the algorithm might take a bit longer, but it will find a matching. That is the algorithm will terminate. And the second nice property is that the matching it finds is a stable matching. So one of the best examples of where the Gale Shapley algorithm is used is in the National Residence Matching Program, the program run for medical students in the United States. The aim of the program is to find residency positions for students uh, in hospitals across the country. And the Gale Shapley algorithm is used to find a stable matching between students and hospitals. So now we've seen the problem that the algorithm is trying to solve. Let's see how it works. So say we have 10 men and 10 women going to a dance and we are trying to find a stable matching between them. So before we run the Gale Shapley algorithm, each of the 10 men make a list of their most preferred women from one to 10. That is their topmost preference is number one, their second best is number two and so on. And each of the women do the same with the men. Now it's important to note that this has to be a strict order of preference. That is a man cannot say he chooses two women to have the same ranking. And similarly, a woman cannot say that she chooses two or three men to have the same ranking. So once all the men and women have finished making their list, the next step is for each of the men to propose to the woman at the top of their list. We could also have the women make the proposals to the men and we'll discuss the implications of this later. For now, let's just assume that the men propose to the women. So all of the men go up to the woman at the top of the list and say, Hey, do you want to come to the dance with me? And once this is done, all the women look at the proposals they've received. And if they've received just one proposal, they say yes. Tentatively, they say, yeah, sure, let's go to the dance. But if they receive more than one proposal, they look through it and choose their topmost suitor and they reject all the others. So now all of the men have proposed to the women at the top of their list and some of them have been matched, that is their proposals have been accepted and some of them have been rejected. So say a man has been rejected, he proposes to the next woman on his list and she accepts his proposal if she is currently unmatched, that is she does not have a partner for the dance yet or if she prefers him over her current partner, in which case she goes to her current partner and says, well, I don't think I'd like to go with you. And she accepts the new proposal. If she doesn't prefer him, if she prefers her current partner over him, then she rejects him. 
and he moves on and proposes to the next woman on his list. And this happens with all of the men that are currently unmatched. And we keep on going until all of the men find a partner for the dance. When this happens, the algorithm terminates and we see that there is a matching between all of the men and all of the women and that this is a stable matching. So now we've discussed how the algorithm works. Let's see an example. Now it would take too long to pair 10 men and 10 women. So in this example, we will pair four men, Frank, Dennis, Mac and Charlie with four women, Ria, Mary, Kate and Jill. And here in the tables are the order of preferences of the women and the men. So Frank prefers Kate the most and Jill the least and so on. So step one of the algorithm is for the men to make proposals to the women at the top of their list. So Frank proposes to Kate, Dennis proposes to Mary, Mac also proposes to Kate and Charlie proposes to Ria. Now we will evaluate these proposals in the order that they were made as it would be done in a computer program. But you should note that it does not actually matter what order the men make proposals to the women. So if Charlie had started making proposals, then we would still have the same stable match. So Kate has received two proposals, one from Frank and one from Mac. And she prefers Mac over Frank, so she rejects Frank and she accepts Mac's proposal. And Mary has received a proposal from Dennis and she's currently unmatched, so she accepts. Ria has received a proposal from Charlie and although Charlie's at the bottom of her list, she is currently unmatched, so she tentatively accepts. So at the end of round one, Dennis, Mac and Charlie are paired, but Frank is unpaired. So in step two, Frank proposes to the next woman on his list, which is Mary. Now Mary's already paired with Dennis and she prefers Dennis over Frank. So she rejects Frank's proposal and she continues being paired with Dennis. In step three, Frank proposes to the next woman on his, on his list, which is Ria. Now Ria is currently paired with Charlie, but she prefers Frank over him. And so she rejects Charlie's proposal and she accepts Frank's proposal. So at the end of step three, Frank, Dennis and Mac are paired, but Charlie is unpaired. So in step four, Charlie makes a proposal to Mary, who is the next woman on his list. And Mary is currently paired with Dennis, but she prefers Charlie over Dennis. So, so she rejects Dennis's proposal and she accepts Charlie's proposal. And now Charlie and Mary are, are paired, but Dennis is unpaired. So Dennis proposes to the next woman on his list, which is Jill. And all this while Jill has been unpaired. So she readily accepts Dennis's proposal and they become paired. So at the end of step five, Frank is paired with Ria, Dennis is paired with Jill, Mark is paired with Kate and Charlie is paired with Mary. And there are no more unmatched men. So the algorithm terminates and we have a matching. We've seen an example. Now let's look at the time complexity. Say we have n men and n women and we are finding a stable matching between them. At each step of the algorithm, a man would make a proposal to a woman. And each new proposal involves a new pair. And this is because of the way the algorithm works. If you remember, we said that a man always proposes to the next best woman on his list who he is not already proposed to. So clearly, every new proposal involves a new pair. And since we have n men and n women, at most we can have n squared pairs. And since each new proposal involves a new pair. In the worst case scenario, there would be n squared proposals and therefore the algorithm is order n squared. I had said that we would discuss the implications of the women proposing first. In the previous example, we had the men proposing first and we found a stable matching. Now let's see what happens if the women propose first. So Ria would propose to Frank and they would get paired. Mary would propose to Mac. Kate would propose to Dennis and Jill would propose to Charlie. And we can see that in one round, we have found a stable matching. And this stable matching is much more favorable for the women than it is for the men. And this is generally true. The stable matching tends to favor the group that does the proposals. So this is the end of the lesson. For another example and a more detailed explanation about the properties that I've mentioned, 
Please have a look at the links and references in the description section below.